<laughs> oh shit, man! All right, all right, all right. Shalom, shalom. Uh, yasher all, yasher all, man. I just, I'm sorry. Um, I just can't. I can't even handle this dude anymore. Okay, so this is the Night Watch. You know what it is. Ashamawara. So, um, you know, back at it again. Um, my family's asleep and stuff, so I got a little bit of some free time late at night. Figured uh, I would address some problems. Um, some real bad problems that are going around in Israel right now. I don't know what the fuck happened. But, uh, dude, check check this out. This is This is some funny shit. Check this out. Check this out. Um, okay, so first off, what I wanted to address, so, I'm, and then I'm not, because this is where we're mainly going to be at, um, in this lesson today, but I wanted to address a few things first on YouTube. Um, so, today, I was doing some studying, taking care of some business, and, uh, oops, didn't mean to go on that, um, and I ended up seeing this, is, uh, Sakari so sit downs trying to teach the temple man. Let's go, let's go down. Check this out. Part one temple man introduction. And right off the bat, okay, first off, they're Christians. So what are you even doing trying to teach the temple? That's like impossible. Second, um dude, first Corinthians, right off the bat. Like it did the, the the fucking picture. You don't even have to click in the video. You just see First Corinthians. That's insulting. What the, the Temple Man and First Corinthians? No, dude, that don't that don't fly. That don't fly like at fucking all. Um, and it's not just that. So he's got part one, part two, and that was introduction. And then they busted out another one. And I told him, don't do it. And they busted out another one. Called Hewn Stones, because Judas, Judas, uh, Judas got everybody off on the Hewn Stones thing. Which then he also accuses me of teaching against, which I never taught against a Hewn Stone, or that fact that stones weren't used in Solomon's temple or Ezekiel's temple as the outer portion or as the foundation. But I, what my problem was, was that Judah tried to say that the incense altar was the shield of David. And that it was a square cube and uh, that it was a stone at one point. So that's my problem. And anybody, all they have to do is, okay, if I spoke against it, then show me where. Then point it out. Go to my comment board. Go to the videos that I made and point out on the comment board, point out what time. Like, give me the time signature. Of when it is that I supposedly like just totally spoke against. And he acts like I totally spoke against the cube too. And I didn't speak against the cube. I specifically and clearly stated in my video. Which those that actually watched the damn video. Um, I said that the Holy of Holies was a cube shape. Man I have. Look I even have it in my notes. A 15 foot cube. Containing only the Ark of the Covenant. Man I. I'm not retarded, bro. I know that there's cubes involved. But my problem is, is that this is not a cube. The incense altar is not a cube. I've shown it is a rectangular, um, well, solid. Brother Yuanathan hooked me up with the term, um, the official mathematical term. You know, it's, it's our, our geometric, you know what I mean, mathematical. Um, it's a rectangular solid. So this is a rectangular solid. Not a cube. That was the problem. Don't don't put cubes where they don't belong. Don't put things where they don't belong. That's my damn problem. That was the problem. And if anybody actually watched the video, they would clearly know. They they know that I clearly stated it over and over. But you know, motherfuckers like to lie and shit. Um. Okay. So um. And then this is the okay. So check this out. So then you go to said video, and you come down here. Oh wait. Did I click on the right one? No, I think I clicked on part two. Yep, clicked on part two. Okay, you go to part one and uh, and watch. Judah talks all kinds of shit about it too, but watch. I just wanted to point something out. Look, look, look. Okay, so Judah, and then he just made a video uh, big upping these guys. And like I said, this ain't going to be one of those stupid Judah Nash shit talking, whatever the fuck that he likes to pull, calling me screech and shit. I really don't care. Um, but this is, you know, I'm just, I have to point it out because look, it's it says, look, 
Yahweh the great Torah teacher, was a cornerstone or a building block of righteous conduct to follow after. Okay, like, I, I don't disagree with that statement. The same can be said, Moses, David, etc. Okay. They were men whom the Torah was in their minds and hearts. Um, well, the heart is the mind. The heart is lab or labab, and it means mind. So, uh, you know. But anyway, and they exemplified righteous conduct, okay, as opposed to the base or profane man. All right. This is a hard concept for Old Testament and New Testament brothers alike. I agree. They think in outward form. When Yahweh said that the flesh will profit you nothing, he was saying that the inner man, the temple man, must be built up by knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Okay, yeah, okay. You see how it's a stumbling block for Old and New Testament brothers alike. They don't learn to think spiritual. The Torah dudes will say, oh, you're worshiping Jesus, but that's not it at all. If they love the Torah, they will, like they claim they do, they would understand his teachings. He was teaching the inner man. Now, I'll admit, I don't mess with Paul, but he didn't go off. That did, did, Let me re-get that again. Okay, I agree about the Torah teacher, the, the teacher of righteousness. You know what I'm saying? That's spoken of in the Dead Sea Scrolls. His teaching, because it was prophesied in Ezekiel 40, 44, 10 through uh, 15, that the Zadokites kept the charge, and uh, and uh, Yahushua, who was the teacher of righteousness, the Mawarad Zadokwa, who was prophesied of in Joel 2 and 23, that is who I give credit to, okay? But Paul, what the fuck? Look, what he's, look, 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 let me get that again. He says, I don't mess with Paul, but he didn't go off. Okay, this, I don't see that being a typo, considering that he's on a computer, and he's doing cap locks and dots and did you know how he does man he's on a computer bro smacking it up so that's not that's didn't didn't go off if you get what he's saying paul replaces wisdom with the word christ cuz he says until christ be formed in you proverbs wisdom equals the heart and soul but it's a stumbling block if you think paul's allegory of christ as a flesh man so basically he's saying is paul was legit you know, some of his, you know, he was, he was, you know, he was just talking about uh, wisdom. He just called it Christ. And, uh, you know, but, but people just think of it as a flesh man. When he speaks of a principle which equals wisdom, not everything Paul says is wrong. What? Man, what happened to Paul was an Edomite and fuck Paul and Paul's writings is bullshit and he spoke. What happened to Acts 21? Stone this motherfucker. He spoke against the temple. He spoke against the people. He spoke against the law. He spoke against the circumcision. He spoke against Moses. He spoke against everything. We were going to stone that motherfucker, bro. What happened to that? Oh, but now Paul, not everything Paul said was wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like, what, what, dude? What? What I dislike is Paul is using allegory of Christ as wisdom. Really? Really? So he's using Alga? No, bro. Christ is a goddamn penis god. And you fucking know that. He says, uh, First Corinthians. He even quoted First Corinthians. Leads many to stumble because they're not allegory, allegory able. Because I understand this part. I'm still iffy only because he replaces wisdom with Christ. And then people began to think in flesh terms. So it wasn't that Paul was teaching wrong. It's just that Paul was teaching, was calling wisdom Christ. And people just took it wrong in the flesh. What the fuck? And not an allegory as a principle of wisdom and righteous conduct. Do you see how if you don't see it, you can stumble? You can fall into idolatry. Dude, Paul is idolatry, bro. Perhaps this is Yahweh's doing to see who sees and who is blind. And when brothers say Kahalal in the name of Yahweh and his son, understanding. So when brothers say, so he says, if when brothers say Kahala in the name of Yahweh and his son, understanding from the mother wisdom, Proverbs 8, it makes sense. No, it doesn't make sense. That's a damn Trinity formula, man. That's Christianity, dude. I, oh, man. If you get, bro, I don't give a fuck how you try to spin that shit. That's fucking Christianity, dude. I don't, man, if you can't see that shit, that's whack as fuck trying to justify motherfuckers praying in the name of the son, which is understanding the name of the, what? The son of Yahweh was, was Israel, man. What the fuck? Dude, I, what happened to Exodus 4, 20, uh, 22 and 23? What, Hosea 11 and 1. The fuck? Oh my God. Because we know Yahweh was a builder, stone, and son from the father and the woman, the Torah and wisdom, then I have no issue with that. So it's okay. So it's okay to pray in the name, you know, is that what he's saying? For real, bro, because this is ridiculous. When brother, I don't see, it sees blind. If 
when brothers say, Ka halal in the name of Yahweh and. What and? No, there is no and. What the fuck? And his son understanding. Where's that in Exodus 20? Where's that? Where is that? Where is that? That is nowhere. This motherfucker tries to call me, tell me where's Metatron in the Torah. Motherfucker, I was asking you where Metatron is in the Torah. I was exposing you for teaching Metatron in that shit. That shit ain't in the fucking Torah, bro. I speak against that shit, man. And anybody that watched the videos knows that I wasn't teaching it. Show me where in my videos where I was teaching Metatron in a positive light. Show me. Point it out. Go to the video. Go to the comment boards on my video. Type it in, like I said before, in the comment boards where it's at, and I'll address it in the video. Where? Fucking where? All right, so check it out. He says, I have no issue with that, man. So it's okay. Look, it makes sense. So he says, oh, you know, if you, as long as it's, it's in this context. No, man. What the fuck? But because, we, because we know Yahweh Shah was the builder, stone, and son from the father and the woman, the Torah and wisdom, then I have no issue with that. But you know our people are not there yet. We are still a flesh Egypt-minded people that will pro- and that will profit is us, supposed to be us, nothing. That's, dude, no, bro. Like, and then, congrats, brothers, just raised the bar for the New Testament Israelites. Yeah, my co-sign as the number one New Testament camp on YouTube, period. I made a congrats video, and he did. Uh, we have our agreements, but our differences. You have blah, 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 going off on stupid shit. But that's, that's ridiculous. Nah, man, like that's, no, dude, you don't, you don't support that shit, bro. And then look, I was on here. You can't fit your idol into the temple. This is madness. And then this dude's like, I have no idol. I worship Yahweh alone, right? When this motherfucker prays in the name of the sun, Praising the name of someone and Jews like, oh, it's cool, man, as long as you're praying in the in, you know in the name of the son in this context. No, dude, you don't pray in no names, damn it. What the fuck is that? What? No. No, this is getting out of hand, dude. Like, Kazwan helped me out on this one, man. Shout out to that brother. But like just like ridiculous. Shout out to Brother Tabak, man. Big shout out to Brother Tabak. Goddamn warrior right there. The slaughterer, man. That's what Tabak means, the slaughterer, bro. God, man, what do you guys even know? What do you guys even know? Are you so retarded. But anyways, I, I that was ridiculous. But anyways, they spent the whole time trying to justify the try to teach the temple out of the New Testament. F- freaking retarded. Check this out. Oh, I didn't mean to go to Facebook. Hold on. Okay, check this out. See, look, he made a video. Sakari sit-downs just raise the bar for the New Testament Israelites. This is what I was laughing at, okay? Like I said, I'm not going to spend too much more time on this. Uh, I just wanted to show uh, his little comments. I don't even... I, I hate the animal. I don't even listen to silence. I just want to show it because really he tells you everything that's going on just in the intros and the outros, and he knows that. Um, so check this out. In this video, Sakari sit-downs, Temple Tabernacle. Like I said, this ain't like a shit talk or like that. I'm going to bust out mass scriptures and prove my points and all that shit. But you know what I'm saying? I just want to show you how he's lying on this shit. Check this out. He just raised the bar for the New Testament Israelites. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. I don't agree with all his views, but he gets the gist of it. No, dude, you can't enter the temple, period, if you're an idolater. I'm sure he will build it up more. Build what up more? The wicked tabernacle of Ezekiel chapter 8? Because that's what y'all are building. Oh, there goes the rotating fucking six. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I see that again. There goes the mirror thing. I see he understands the concept of the brick, stone, cube, the brick. Remember brick. Remember brick. Remember brick, 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 brick. Remember. Uh, unlike these fake niggas pretending to be guardians of temple, talking about the incense altars, the throat, that's a shout out, a shot to me, uh, which I'm going to prove my point. Um, look like GMS and the rest of the camps better get hip to the Torah or they're going to be way behind. That's funny because he didn't use Shamarai. We were the original ones using Shamarai and Ashamawara and all that shit. And then he just, you know, he had to come and steal our shit. Sakari so sit downs is... Number one New Testament Israelite group on YouTube, period. Even though they teach reincarnation and uh, he's not sure if uh, Masha was... Go look at the comment boards. He's not sure if Masha was uh, was um, David or not. That, that was not... No, you want proof? Look, because I asked him, was that Masha dude 
from one West that, that Tahar and them say was David reincarnating. Was he, was he reincarnating? And he's like, Oh, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know. Can't deny. He's like afraid to deny like his teacher's teachings, but fucking man, this, this is too much whackness. See, see all this fucking bullshit that's going on, man. Like, and you guys think this is cool. You guys think this is like fucking, this is noble, right? Fucking dude, get the fuck out of here. Look. Uh, look, I don't know if Masha was King David. Let's deal with my question now. See, and he's like, if I'm committing adultery, come kill me. We can't kill you, motherfucker. We're in captivity. What the hell's wrong with you? And it's, he doesn't even know. He don't even know, man. He's like, oh, you know, I don't know. You can know. No, dude, you're fucking idolaters. You're fucking Hinduism and shit. Fucking idolatry, man. How could you support this shit? How could you... Yeah, Sakari's teaching fucking idols in the temple. Right on. What the fuck? When did, when did this become okay? When did the... Wow. But, you know, I'm the bad guy, right? I am. Big bad All right, so check it out. I just want to skip to the end real quick. Okay, so check it out. Uh, where's the end? I just want to get to the end text where he's talking that mad shit. Just to show you, like, you know what I mean? Like, the, the shit, because I'm going to debunk it. Okay, hold on. I have to, like... It's in a weird spot. Hold on. So just bear with. But anyways, so, again, like I said, just to make everything clear again, man... Like, I even mentioned in my video that the Holy of Holies was a cube, not the fucking incense altar, which that jackhole taught. I went over it. If you haven't seen the videos, go watch it. I, you know, open rebuke, dude. Like, <clears throat> seriously, where I'm wrong, show me, dude. Show me. Like, nonsense. Lying all over the fucking place. You watch Jude Naz's video, he splices and cuts and talks shit and does this and that and all this crap. But if you actually go and watch the video for yourself... Um, I didn't say any of that shit. I didn't support Metatron. I never said he was a part of the Torah. I accused Judah of teaching the Metatron cube because he tried to say that this was a cube and that you could fit the shield of David in here, which is nonsense. I showed that. How could you fit something that has six points into something that has eight points? And then he tries to teach that it has 10 points, but really, and then he talks about 10 virtues when really that just goes back to, well, the way he's teaching it. He's, then what he's really talking about, it goes back to the Kabbalah with the 10 Sephirots and the 10 virtues and the 10 vices that go with the Sephirots. Like if I, dude, if I, I really don't want to have to fucking like expose this dude, like all fucking hard body like that again. Like I already made like this four part series exposing him for being like a fuck face and nobody, like I guess everybody just like ignored it or something. I really don't want to have to do it again. Like, I really don't. So, like, I'm not going to. But, like, this is this is ridiculous. I'm not going to do this back and forth bullshit fucking thing because that's what he wants to do. Okay, look, I'm glad a New Testament group and finally incorporated some Torah allegory in their teachings. He's justifying the wicked. I'm glad these brothers separated themselves from the one rest of One West Doctrine. They teach just the same as Stakar damn GMS. Because let's be frank, this shit was wearing thin. Yeah, I know. Their shit's wearing thin just like GMS's shit. What the fuck? Anyway, perhaps the Most High will use these brothers to elevate their thinking. No, not unless they get rid of the idol. Because the old One West Doctrine by itself is Egypt. It makes brothers zombies. Okay, here's where he starts talking that mad shit. Uh, come on, hurry up. I don't want to be on here anymore. Let me say this to whack-ass Quidummy Quidash is going to do his usual stalker weirdo shit. No, dude, you... Because he knows that I that I'm gonna ha I have to rebuke this shit because it's wickedness. So he's gonna call me and accuse me of being a stalker and all this shit. Which hell not, nah, bro. You, dude, you're the everyone, bro. You're like the master stalker. That's like that's the pot calling the kettle black, dude. That, that's some fucking hardcore shit, dude. Oh lord. But anyways, but the foundation stone cube is also in the New Testament. Like Moses, David, Solomon, etc. are examples of the foundation stone. Yahweh is also used as a foundation stone example. A man of righteous conduct. You're big enough, Paul, dude. Paul, man of righteous conduct? I thought he was an Edomite. Alright, yeah, you're taking that. Okay, but Kodash and Sci-Fi Channel Israelites are not examples of foundation stones. These niggas are liars and deceivers. So there's the accusations. Kodash and his circle teach against the foundation stone teaching. Um, when? When did I ever say, personally, me personally, I don't speak for no one else. Me personally, when did I ever speak against the foundation stone? 
I didn't teach against the foundation stone. And I didn't teach against cubes as in like a cube in general. I taught against the fact that you were trying to turn a rectangular solid into a square cube. That was my problem. And if not, then go to the video and sh type it in and show me where the fuck where. This is madness, man. Like, this is blatant fucking lies. They call it Metatron's Cube and Saturn's Cube. No, I don't call it that, bro. That's what the fucking Kabbalah calls it that. And that's what you were teaching, dude. I showed it. I typed in uh, a 3D hexagram, and then I typed in Cube of Metatron, and it was the same thing. And both of those drawings were what you were teaching in your video. I showed it, bro. Everyone knows. Your videos are up. They could go watch your videos and see you fucking try to justify the shit up and down. So you know these niggas can't build a proper house and temple. Oh, and uh, show me a foundation stone in uh, the wilderness tabernacle. Show me a foundation stone in the wilderness tabernacle. Yeah, doesn't know the wilderness tabernacle. That's the problem. Uh, so in Israel, and that's the reason why I haven't taught about the cornerstone or about foundation stones or about stones in general, hewn stones or any of that, because we're not there yet. I'm not there yet in my videos personally. Just because he skipped over this shit and didn't think that this was important enough to learn, that's not me, yo. Every I think everyone has to know. How are you going to know level two if you don't know level one? How are you going to run before you walk? Huh? That, that shows you're out of rank, bro. That means you don't know the menorah. Of course you don't know the menorah because you say the damn shield is the fucking incense altar instead of the menorah. You don't know anything, dude. So when Israel finally catches up in Stone Village Contatora, everybody remember Kodash and Sci-Fi Channel Remedialites were blaspheming it. Um, when? Where? Show me. That's, that's, bro, you have to have two or three witnesses. Blaspheming is worth freaking, uh, stoning. It's worth death, bro. So you gotta, you gotta bust out two or three witnesses and show me in my own video where I'm talking about that. You gotta type it in in my comment board and be like, hey, you said that the, you taught against the foundation stone here. And I don't want no twisting shit or none of that shit. Because I'll play the whole fucking clip, dude. Nah, man. I said that that was not a foundation stone. And that was not a square cube. Or none of that shit. That, I was defending the incense altar. This was all about the incense altar. I even admitted that the Holy of Holies was a cube, dude. So why would I speak against cubes? That's freaking retarded. Like, what? Ah. <sighs> Don't let them niggas forget it. Yeah, because we know everybody else has a short term. See, he relies on the fact that everyone has a short term memory and doesn't remember that this motherfucker is like constantly fucking up. This is madness. Yeah, of course. Me, Sakari, sit downs in the tour nights are the new brothers building a new house of understanding. See, they're building a new house, man. This ain't the temp temper tabernacle, man. They're not building this. They're not building this. They're not building this. They're not building Ezekiel's temple either. They're building the temple of Ezekiel chapter 8, which is the temple of, of, of idolatry, of abominations. And I'll read over that if I have to, too. But everyone should know it. A new man of understanding. So he's, he's a Christian. He's still a Christian. He's a Trinitarian. I told you, man. Selassie. He's still up on that. Them cast out niggas, Kodash, and his crew flunkies are not a part of it. This house requires a noble heart, mind and heart. It's the same thing, you jackass. At first, it will be a hard concept, but once you get it, it's easy, except if your heart ain't right, you will stumble. Yes, Judah, you stumbled. There goes the number six again, rotating in the name of Yahweh Ashenau. Okay, and then this is my thing. He's praying over the internet? Like, even the Torah... Temple teacher, right, because you, you like to reference his teachings of the New Testament, right? You like to say that those are his teachings of the New Testament. Well, in Matthews, it talks about us going into the don't pray in front of everybody, right? Is that not what it says? Are we not supposed to pray towards Jerusalem and make this thing between us and Yahweh? It's not about everyone seeing your prayer. This is like that shit that you see on Facebook where motherfuckers are like, oh, please, God. They're like praying to God. Not, this is praying to... What are you doing? It doesn't say to go into your mind and shut it up. But Sakari, why don't you rebuke him on this shit? Look, look, look. Check it out. Because he's praying. He's praying out open. Sakari. Sakari. All right? Why don't you rebuke him on that then? Uh -huh. How come he's going off from your teachings? Because uh, your homie in uh, chapter 6, right? What does it say? But when you pray... Look, look, look. 
And when thou prayest, verse 5, thou shalt be, not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets. And that's this is basically like, you know, this in the congregation, before the whole congregation, right? The, the, in the streets, in the synagogues, that they may be seen of men. Verily, I say unto you, they have their reward. And don't take me wrong, I'm not saying that the synagogues are legit or we should go there or nothing. But I'm just saying that's what like represents like the temple community, you know. They have the reward, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. This is supposed to be all in secret between you and Yahweh in your closet, um, in your mind, man. You're supposed, it's, just, it's your mind. You're supposed to be praying there, praying by yourself, like, you know what I'm saying? Not amongst people, like, praying like that, man. And you're not supposed to use vain repetitions and shit. So, and we all know that, and everybody always uses the vein river. That's what everybody uses the cuts the Catholics with, right? Well, what the fuck is this, man? You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm just saying, you know, supposedly you revert. That was red letter. That was, that was red letter. Look, let's see, there's black lettering, red lettering, right? Go to chapter six. It's all red lettering. So this is the words of Yahweh Shah, right? Is that what you say? The Torah teacher that they took his teachings and they took some of them and they put them in the New Testament, right? So is that one of his teachings or is that not one of his teachings? And if that isn't one of his teachings, then you're going to have to, everybody's going to have to start showing them what's his teachings and what isn't his teachings in the New Testament. Since y'all want to support that shit. And if that is a, a part of the, to, 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 if that is a good teaching, right? Then why are you praying in front of the whole congregation like this? Look. Of the whole congregation, Shalom, you other brothers, pay attention. The bar is being raised. When you get it, I ask of you, remember who was teaching against it. So, like, he, he like, it's just nonsense because he was doing that last time, too, man. He was freaking uh, praying online and shit, man. He's been doing that shit lately. Fuck, hold on. I wanted to get it, like. Oh, shit. Hold on. Uh, it's hard to do it on the tablet, it's a lot. Watch, this is, man, this is, this is craziness. Yeah, cast out news, blah, 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 whatever. Like I said, I just wanted to show you guys all the case against me that's built up against me first, and then I'm gonna, um, rebuke it. And then I'm gonna get back to fucking teaching shit, which is what we were supposed to be doing, which I'm gonna be teaching while I'm rebuking anyways. Of the whole congregation, Shalom. And then he's even like prayed, oh, I prayed that, blah, blah, blah. Go watch his older, his other fucking videos watch. I don't want to like be all up on the dude's shit, really. Of course, he likes Akari shit. Watch. Oh, yeah, that was the one he was talking shit on me. Um, let's go to this one. Let's see if he does it on this one. Ads, ads all over. Anyway, you could go check it out yourself. It's at the end of one of his videos. He's praying and fucking in the name of Yahweh and rebuking people and all kinds of fucking whack shit. Um, and then he's going to say, because it, it just in the name, you know, I'm not praying, blah, blah, blah. But he did on one of them. Watch. That's why I wanted to get it. Hold on. Uh... That's against me again. I'm not as skilled as I think I am. I made a pact with the remedialites. It was bullshit. All I said was that I would slay him for everyone, actually. Let's see if it does it on this one. In the name of Yahweh, Shanawa, our creator, and salute to the mashal, sincere, the spirit of wisdom, will not dwell in a wicked, crafty soul. There he goes again. Call me wicked and a crafty soul and all this shit. Ah, man, where's the one where he said the fucking prayer one, man? Hold on. I want to find that exact one I was talking about. And if not, then okay, well, then I take it back. But I'm pretty damn sure I saw that shit. And if I didn't, like I said, I'll, I have no problem, man. If I make mistakes, man, like I said, I have no damn problem. See, look. It's saying that I'm talking about Metatron, blah, 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 put to death. Dude, you were the one teaching the shit, dude. I've never taught that Metatron was a part of the Torah. That's some fucking bullshit. But let's see. Hold on, let's see. Yeah, may you forgive the sincere of their sins and punish their stiff-necked idolatry witches in front of the whole congregation. These niggas keep it... See, he, that was to him. The, who are you speaking of then to who? who? Who else could do that except for Yahweh? 
asking him. That's praying. That's asking him for shit. In the name of Yahweh, man. Fucking asking. He's praying for shit. Like fucking over lying. Like cursing fucking people and shit, man. Now I'm be doing that shit. Oh, like I said, I guess it's not praying technically. Whatever. whatever. Okay, well then I'll take that one back. We'll, 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 we'll leave that one, all right? But still, I don't think you should be fucking doing that shit because he's doing it in wickedness. Either way. Either way, in the name of Yahweh, it's wickedness. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's fuck, it's fucking bullshit, man. It's fucking bullshit. But anyways, so I'm going to get off that. So he was talking mad cash shit. Accusing me of all these things, right? So I guess we'll address the incense altar. Since that's what he's uh, trying to fucking talk shit about. Because he said that it was the heart. He's trying to say, oh, it's the heart because... Uh, uh, David had a heart like the heart of Yahweh, and then he accused me of saying that that wasn't true, which I didn't say that that wasn't true. I said that the heart wasn't the organ that pumps the blood, that he had a mind after Yahweh. But you know, motherfuckers like to twist words and shit. Uh, let's see. Hold on. Bust out the preset real quick. I didn't pull it up. I should have pulled it up before, but watch, check it out. Uh, have... Okay, here we go. Let's see. Where the fuck? Uh, give me this one, but I don't want this one. Precept. Give me this New Testament. One. Okay, so yeah, so look, I just pulled it real quick. You know, Bible hug. Everyone use that shit. But now your kingdom will not endure. Yahweh has sought a man after his own heart and pointed him ruler of his people because you have not kept Yahweh's commandment after his own heart. Okay, let's, let's click on that. Check it out because all y'all motherfuckers like to use this shit, right? Um, so let's get some shit on it then. Damn. Hold on. Ah! Oh man, that kind of would have helped, but oh well, it's all good. Uh... Right here. See, look. Broken down, right? First Samuel 13 and 14. Check it out. Which really, honestly, like to go back to that, actually, it was because it was like bugging me, like, because I don't want to falsely accuse him. But really, Judah saying that to Yahweh out in front of the whole congregation, that technically is like a prayer. It's an incense. It's an incense offering. So it's an offering either way. But I, I, well, whatever. No one knew pick. Like I said, it'll probably come down on me. Everybody's probably going to bitch at me for that shit. But whatever. I've gotten a thousand billion fucking false accusations thrown against me. And not that I'm saying I'm false accused. Like I said, if I did, well, my bad. If no one considers that not praying, then okay, cool. But like to me, that I think that that was praying. But anyway, so check it out. For himself, a man after his own heart. Ka lababao. Labab. The inner man. Mind. The will. They say the heart. They translated it heart, but it's the inner man. The mind. The will, man. The mind. Damn it. The mind, he had a mind after Yahweh. And why, how, how did he have a mind after Yahweh? Because he's like, oh, that's why, because that's what he tried to justify. He tried to say that this was a heart because of where it's situated um, in the temple. But he doesn't understand that this is actually like right here. I just have it because the word curtain, but I'll, I guess I'll move it, move it down just to place it to show motherfuckers. And I'll move it closer, but it's supposed to be right before the veil. And I'm going to show, I'm going to give the scripts. The incense altar is literally right before the veil. The veil covers the, the head, the mind. And you know what I'm saying? Like, how could it be the heart? Like, that's why he's trying to say, like, this is the heart because it's down the middle, like, towards the chest, I guess. You know what I'm saying? That's, it. that's the only thing that I could see because that's retarded. But that's dumb because the heart is actually left center. It, like, it's, like, down further and, like, more to the left. So I don't know. Even anatomically, I don't know how that could be correct. And then he tried to say because the shield fits in there, but that's impossible because it has four... Porn. It's a solid object. That's why it's a rectangular solid. It's a solid object. How can you have to transform six sides into eight? That fucking makes no goddamn sense. But anyway, so how did David, right, the Wad, our king, have a heart 
or a mind right after that of your hollow. Let's check it out. Because like I said, I never said that it wasn't. I just said that he didn't have an organ. Does Yahweh have... Okay, Yahweh has an organ. If you if the heart is like the organ that pumps blood that's in your chest, right, the, in your abdomen or whatever, the in your in your torso, then what... The Yahweh has a heart that pumps blood. You're telling me then. Is that what you're telling me? Or does he have a mind, an intellect? You know what I'm saying? That's, that represents you. It's in your head. That's why it's... Look. Praise Murthy is the man who not... Oh, okay, watch. Check it out. Uh, look, but his, so look, I'll just read verse one. Praiseworthy is the Psalms one, right off the bat. Praiseworthy is the man who walked not in the council of the wicked. Dude, you're in the council of the wicked, bro. You're amongst the Sakaris. The fuck? And stood not in the path of the sinful. Well, you're in their path and sat not in the session of scorners. Dude, you were, Sakari, sit down, session, fucking, dude, man, come on. Uh, um, Anyways, it says, uh, session of scorners, but his desire is in the Tawarah of Yahweh, and his Tawarah, he meditates day and night. Day and night. That's what it means. He has the meditates. It means to have in your mind, you're thinking about his Tawarah day and night. Constantly, you have your mind after Yahweh. You have your mind after the mind of Yahweh, because it's Yahweh created the laws to give to us, and you study the laws, so therefore your mind is on what Yahweh's mind is on. Like what? What is so hard for that to fucking grasp? That is that's that's why the 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 Ten Commandments, the two tablets, are in the Holy of Holies inside the fucking Ark, man, because that's your mind, the two hemispheres of your fucking brain, dude. You're supposed to have the commandments in your mind day and night, so you could have a hot mind just like Yahweh uh, after the heart, the mind of Yahweh, because he doesn't have an organ that pumps blood. Damn retards. The fuck's the matter with you all, man? The shit. Anyway, so we got all kinds of precepts, boy. Woo, would you look at that? Proving the point that, like I said, the insets are, and if I'm wrong, then, then prove it. But it's not, it's not the, I already just proved your whole fucking heart shit, so I don't even want to hear that crap anymore. Okay, so bust out the precept booklet. We're going to get down on the incense altar. Alright, so here we go. Alter for no, no, that's before that. Salak, give me a second. Table of showbread, the menorah. Cover of the tabernacle, which he has talked about none of those things. Um, I don't know, where the fuck is the. Oh, there we go. Incense altar, Exodus 30, 1 through 10. We're just gonna go read it. We're just gonna read the shit for ourselves. Um, I'm going to give you the break to my little uh, summary. We're going to read it for ourselves, okay? Alright. So. You shall make an altar. Exodus 30 and 1. You shall make an altar on which to bring incense upon in smoke of acacia wood. You shall make it. Right? And the word over here is, uh, where are we at? Verse 1. Oh, where's that? 30 and 1. 30 and 1. What? Well, well Ashayat, then you shall make Mazabak uh, an altar for sacrifice, right? Because yeah, the incense is like a sacrifice, an elevation offering. It's an offering. Offering and sacrifice is the same thing. Makutar, Kwataroth, right? Atsai, Shatyam, the Asha. So you will make it, right? And you shall make the altar. Uh, for smoking, for to smoke, for of smoke, to for you to smoke out, right? Because that's what Qatar means. Check it out. It's it means to like hot box, man. That's why it's the incense altar is the fucking throat, man. You hot box, you hot box, you fucking chip, man. You don't don't even understand shit. See Qatar sixty nine ninety nine to seven uh, thousand and four Qatar Quatawaran and Quatarath. Fumigation in a close space, place. What is that? That's hot boxing, man. You you sit in your car and you fumigate that shit in a close space. Driving out the occupants with smoke. Smoke turned into fragrance by fire as an act of worship. That's the incense offering. Incense, burn, offer, kindle, enclose, or joined. A knot tied up, a riddle. That's why he can't get it because it's a riddle to you, man. A vertebra, a knot, man. It's part of your vertebra, brah. Come on, man. 
doubts, joints, perfume and incense, vertebra. What do you have over your spine, dude? Your spine connects up to your throat, bro. You don't, you don't even know. <laughs> Shit, it's a fucking like knot. It's like a knot. What do you think the Adam's apple, what they call the Adam's apple throat? It's like a knot in your throat. That's what your fucking larynx is, you fucking dumb piece of shit. Perfume and incense, okay? So that's what you do. Quatar. Um... A tsai, uh, wood, right? And wood, shayam of, of, of sin, the wood of sin, right? Of shayam, which is the, the sinful wood. We broke it down. Shat means, so if we have to get it again, let's get it again. Uh, shat. Oh, hold on. Shat. Uh, where did I put it? Up, oh, here we go. Shat, shata, shayam, shat, tat. Sin, revolters, deviate from duty to go aside. So you see, that's Ju- Judah. You're shot, bro. You're shot up. You're shot yam. You're shot tat. You know what I'm saying? You're shot. You're, you're wood. You never, you never overlaid yourself with gold, homie. You deviate from duty. You go aside. You turn. You decline. You're a stick of wood. Which is what's a bundle of sticks? A faggot. Scourging thorns pierce flog a goad, man. That's why you wear that that crown of thorns of your Jesus. That's why you're talking that Trinity talk, trying to be all homies with Sakari and shit, man. That scourging thorns, the piercing, the flogging, the goading, man. You know what I'm saying? You never rose above this shit. Look, Shawat, to detrude, become derelict. You become derelict, son. You, you're, ho- you're poor. You, you slumbered. You got your, your, your what Proverbs say? You saw a little sleep and, and uh, poverty will come upon you? Gone. Wrongly practice idolatry. Uh-oh. To turn aside, to push forth, to lash, to whip, to scourge. Oh, Judas. So bad for you. So, Atsai, Shat Yam Ta'asha, you shall make towards. So, you shall make a wood, piece of wood out of shit. You shall make the altar, piece of wood. This is the way the Hebrews phrase. It's like backwards, you know what I'm saying? Like Spanish. But anyways, um, so there's that. Okay, so now what are, what are the precepts do we got? Okay, so I was just, oh, okay, well, we're keep going. We're, we're going on this. What does it say? Its length is a cubit and its width is a cubit, which is one cubit each, which is a cod, right? Which is one. It's one on each side to be square. So it's like it's, it's a square and its height two cubits, but then its height is two cubits. So its height is double the height of its width and length, Okay. And that's Judah's problem. He didn't care. He even said whatever, man. I even got that shit. Hold on. He he even said it. You could go check it out on my comment boards, man. I ain't going to waste too much time on that shit. But I have it. I have the screenshots too. Um, he straight said, what? oh, in fact, you know what? I just have the straight screenshots. That, um, there we go. That way I don't have to waste too much time. He said whatever. He said whatever when I called him out on that shit. Look at this fucking crap. Hold on. Uh, see, look, there's that. The incense altar is the heart, you damn fool, not a voice or a throat. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, remember that. It's a symbol. Its symbol is David and Solomon, the heart after Yaz. Um, we read that that heart was L- Labab, was the mind. Okay, so anyways, um, look, because I said this, look. And also, I never said the square cube isn't used in the temple. I merely corrected you when you tried to use that and say that the incense altar was a square cube when Torah clearly states its height is twice that of its length and width. Did we not just read that? Dumbass. You will never outdo me when it comes to house plans. I drew them for a fucking living. And I did. I added the fucking, but you know. Look at what he tells me. A cube, rectangle, whatever. Oh, no, son. That is bad. That is not being circumspect. Didn't Yahweh tell us to be circumspect in everything that we do? Damn it, do I have to bust it out? Do I have to bust it out? Look, we're, we're in Exodus. and In fact, it's in Exodus. In fact, what is it, 23? Is it Exodus 23? Be circumspect of everything I tell you? What is, where is that shit, man? Hold on. Uh, oh, right here. 13, 23 and 13, be carefully regarding everything I have said to you. The name of the gods of others you shall not mention, nor shall you mouth your mouth cause it to be heard. Why? Because that is offering false incense. That's offering uh, uh, wicked incense, man. That's uh, um, 
uh, what is it called? Uh, um, strange fire. You know what I'm saying? Be careful regarding everything. Be careful, bro. In the KJV, it says circumspect, right? Well, what the fuck? Cube, rectangle, whatever. It's still speaking of height, length, and lit width. Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. You're missing the point. No, you fucking jackass. You're missing the point. You don't understand the fact that that cubit has a lot to do with everything. His lack, let me tell you right now, his lack, his lack of care for this cubit shows that his house isn't one. He's not one, man. He's not one with Yahweh, bro. Because that's what it means. That's what it means to make the temple. That It says that's what the whole reason. See, this is why. Because he doesn't understand the wilderness tabernacle. If you understand the wilderness tabernacle, then you'll know that you're supposed to link. That there's two sets of curtains that go over. Right? That go. There's four clo- There's four sets. But, the, in the, but it breaks the, the last one. It, it, but they all break down into two sets. of. Well, the first two curtains break down into two sets of curtains. Put together with loops and, and a ring. 50 loops on each side and 50 rings down the middle that loop it. And it says to make the house one. And if you want the precept on that, because I'm going to still break down the covering. I still got to break that down. So I'm going to do that because I'm trying to save time. I only got an hour and 20 minutes and I really want to fit um, as much as I can in here. I really don't want to do a part two. I'll probably have to do a part two. Plus, I wanted to cover this on its own thing, not as a rebuke, but as just, you know, of respect for Tawara to do it as its own lesson. So I will probably recover all of this again. So, bear with me. Oh, sh- I was looking for the covering. Okay, right here, look. If you want the precepts, it is Exodus 26, uh, 1 through 14. Ten curtains of fine twisted linen. So, it's ten and ten on each side, two sets of five, 50 loops on the ends of both sets, corresponding 20, uh, 50 gold hooks attached to the curtain with hooks to make the tabernacle one. He... Not caring for the extra cubit because one, one in Hebrew, because we got half, we got one. One in Hebrew means a cod to unify, collect one's thoughts. He can't collect his thoughts anymore. He's not united. One first. He's not the first, man. He's the one single first, once together, sharp. You're not sharpened anymore, man. You lost it. You're not that sharp threshing uh instrument anymore what else is kadad or karawad to be make sharp to sever to pierce right it says sharpen a point i think that's fierce fierce sharpen point you, you've lost it man you're not fierce anymore you're not to a point you're not sharpen that point of the arrow you're, you lost it man you're dull you dulled out because he didn't care i'm sorry but that those words right there are just like like what the fuck Again, whatever. He says, you could draw physical house plans, but I could draw mental, spiritual house plans. You were still outward, ridiculous. Y'all took the spirit from you, blah, 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 whatever, whatever, whatever. But anyway, I just wanted to get the fact that he said whatever um, to the cube. You know what I'm saying? Uh, to, to being the difference between a rectangle and a square. If you don't care about detail, then you, what are you even doing trying to minister the temple? What are you even doing trying to minister the temple? That's madness. But anyway, so it's extra, like I said. So that makes it a, 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 a rectangular uh, solid. And in fact, let's flip to the back of this Torah. And we can see that. A rectangular solid. It's a rectangle. That was my whole problem. I have nothing against cubes. But I have a problem when you try to turn something that's a rectangular solid into a cube. Especially when it has to do with the fucking temple. It says, it shall be square and its height two cubits, and from it its horns be. You shall cover it with pure gold, its roof and its walls all around, and its horns, and you shall make it for a gold crown all around. So it has four horns, it's overlaid with gold, four horns on it, and uh, uh, also a crown. You shall make for it two gold rings under its crown and its two corners. You shall make on its two sides, and it shall be for a housing for the staves, which are to carry it. And you shall make the staves of acacia wood or shatyam and cover them with gold. Everything is made of shittim wood in the wilderness tabernacle and overlaid with gold or made of pure gold itself, except for the front five pillars, which have brass. Um, um, but this is inside the temple. You know, that's kind of more or less like the outer part as well. It has brass um, uh, bases. Uh, um, like I, I, I'm losing the word here, but it's like the 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 bottom part of the tavern. This this part. Watch. Let me show you. 
um, this, that, these, the sockets, sockets, those uh, in the front of the temple. And then these sockets themselves for the actual walls, uh, for these walls, those ones are silver. And then this one is uh, bronze and then um, gold in the inside because you go from bronze to gold. But anyways, uh, let's go back. We're trying to finish it out. We're at 50 minutes already. I got like 30 minutes to try to explain this. Uh, you shall place it before... Okay, so this is where it gets good. You shall place it before the partition that is by the Ark of the Testimonial Tablets in front of the cover that is on the Testimonial Tablets, where I shall set my, where I shall set my meetings with you. So... What he's telling us is he will set his meetings with us on top of the ark, and you shall place this right in front of the ta of the ark, which is uh, uh, in front of the of the the uh, covering the veil that covers the ark, because this veil covers the head, just like Masha. Remember when Masha came down from the from the mountain and he covered his head with the veil? Well, that's what that is. That's what that represents, the veil. And what it, in, the, in anatomy, man, like your, your head is its different section. Your neck is not attached to your head when they do anatomy, bro. Your neck is still a part of your torso. Like you have your, your limbs, your torso, and your head. Like your torso is part of like what they call the thorax, you know what I mean, on, on animals and stuff. Like that's your neck is still a part of that, homie. You don't know fucking anatomy or what? And that's see, that's the part of the super deep. The Levites knew everything. The Levites knew anatomy, they knew music, they knew everything you could possibly think of. Check it out. I, I think I should have it still pulled up. Hold on. I better have it pulled up. No, I don't. But it's okay, because we could pull it up real fast anyways. Check it out. Uh, well, first let's pull up this. Okay. We'll pull up this. And then... We'll also pull up, um, what is, um, what did I say? Your, uh, not abdomen, uh, cause that's like your abs, your lower, um, your torso. Torso. Anatomy. All right. So check it out. Real simple. Type this shit in Google. Real simple. Okay. You ready for this? Okay. Look. Torso anatomy. Images, look, what do you, oh, uh oh, I, I think I see the throat, uh oh, what's that, oh, uh, oh shit, that's your fucking langs, oh, uh oh, uh oh, oh shit, would you look at that, and look, check it out, this is your larynx, check this out, how deep is this, your larynx, pretty much, even almost looks like the incense altar itself, check this out. It's got that, wow, well, oh, what's, like, because that's a good image too, as well. But there's like this specific one. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess it's the same image, but it's, look. See, it's in the throat, right? Look, it's got a crown. Look, it's even got like a crown and it's got like four horns almost even. You know, I'm just saying like on a carnal level and it's got the middle, the bull for the, for the, for the offering even. I'm just saying, even even on a on a basic carnal, if you want to go uh, that that type, because obviously, how did you get the the heart? Where are you getting the heart thing? Because we all know the heart is the mind. So why the only thing I could think of where Judah thinks it's the heart is because of where it's placed. That he thinks it's supposed to be more towards down your chest, when actually it's supposed to be right underneath the veil. Which, like I said, if you take the, even the image of this, look, it even got like four horns and a crown. What do you think? Ah, oh, slack. I got like. Attacked by like a fly. Uh, look at that. Like a crown. And then it even has the little bowl. Oh. Well, technical difficulties. Like, watch. Check it out. Let's go to the back again. Because what do you have? Because there's even like a, a, a place in the middle where you, where you burn the shit. Okay. And I got scriptures to boot. Proving this point too. This is just like a, I'm telling you, man. We're barely getting warmed up. That's why I'm, I'm such a shame. I'm trying to rush now because we've got so much. But look, that's what it is, man. And you don't even understand. Like this is why it's, it has to do with everything because it links up with your upper respiratory system because it's right before the veil, and your vocal cords are connected to your damn. Man. And then look, watch. 
because it's like the cartilage. And then, watch, uh, that's not the exact one. But it's even covered, it's even on the sides, even if you look at certain, because, you know, there's different pictures for different ones or whatever. But if you look at certain ones, it even looks like it's encased uh, by by a substance that looks like a, like even like a brain almost. It's pretty crazy. I'm not saying anything like that, but I'm just saying, you know what I mean? Like, like it's almost the same thing, like a same covering. It's That's what's important. Uh, let's see, look. Uh, thyroid, it has to succeed because it's connected to your trachea. Because remember, we were talking about the, 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 the spine. You know what I mean? It's a, the spinal shit, dude. It's it has, and this goes right, b- right before your head. Like I said, it's still part of your torso, and then it's, and then it's your head. See, it's right there, right before the veil, and that's why when you speak, when you burn the incense, it's a, it's an offering. It's a sweet incense, and I'm about to get all that. How the offerings of your voice are uh sweet incense that 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 is what Yahweh views as an offering now that's what he accepts as offerings now um instead of uh bulls see look vocal cords the larynx and the vocal cord right there so that's it's showing you man the the, the it's that's where your vocal that's where your voice comes from man if your vocal cord if your larynx is fucked and your vocal cords are done dude there ain't no fucking talking man there ain't no singing songs to Yahweh. There ain't no uh, praising and extolling his name and explaining it to everybody. See, look. Vocal cords. The larynx. See, vocal cords is right there and then the larynx. It's it's connected. It's off the top of it. That's the right on the top. It's where you're burning the incense, man. Come on now. Like, you know, like right in the center. It's the, vo- the, the larynx and then the vocal cords right there, bro. By the horns. You know what I'm saying? That's the horns at the top. And like I said, this is the, that's just like a physical level, right? Check this out. Like I said, that's just a, that's just a, a basic. Look, we're going to fish this out and then I'm going to get more scripts. We're just going to hit them up with scripts now. Upon it, Aaron shall bring the spice incense up in smoke, right? Every morning when he cleans the lamps, he shall bring it up in smoke. So when you're doing the lamps, you're supposed to be bringing the incense, Right? And that's like what um, also in the morning, because that's what I said, and all the mornings and at night, man, you got to be praising Yahweh, right? You got to keep the Torah um, on your mind. You got to give the, the sweet praise him, uh, the, the pray towards him the three times a day, like uh, Daniel, you know, or maybe even seven, like David. Um, it says, oh, shalak, uh, every morning, and when Aaron, right, Aharawan, kindles the lamps in the afternoon, he shall bring it up in smoke. Continual incense before Yahweh for your generations. Even your uh, little New Testament, right? Since uh, Judah wanted to big up Paul, doesn't even Paul say to, to pray unceasingly, to, to always be praying, right? Isn't that why they always tell their women to always continuously have their heads wrapped so that they're always in prayer? Always offering up in incense. They, your New Testament even knows this, bro. What the fuck's your problem? You shall not bring upon it alien incense. Didn't we read the in Exodus 23 how it said not to be um, circumspect or to be uh, uh, real careful about all the words and not to let the other God's names come out of your mouth like Bahashem, uh, you know, JC or Yahweh Shai, as you want to say. Sorry, I had to say it. But, you know, just to get it across. But, you know, I don't say the names on my own. On my own, we, we use like codes and, and shit like that, nicknames and shit like that, man. We don't, but for edification purposes, like I have to know. Um... Or a burnt offering, or a meal offering, or or nor may you pour a libation upon it. A harawan shall bring atonement upon its horns once a year, because he had to confess the sins. From the blood of the sin offering of the atonements once a year shall he bring atonement upon it for your generations. It is it is holy of holies to Yahweh. It is holy of holies, man. So what, is, what does it mean by holy of holies? Kurash Kwarashyam. Smart guy? Right? The Holy of Holies. Is that not what the Debar is? The Holy of Holies? That means it's right before because it's um, it's connect it connects because your upper your respite okay. Your larynx is a part of the respiratory system. You have your upper and your lower respiratory system. That's why when you smoke, let's say you smoke quana, it goes in your mouth, it hits your lung, it goes through your larynx first, and it goes down into your stomach, right? And then it goes up, and then it also goes into your mouth. You can also breathe it in through your nose or, or you know, have it up in your mind at the same time. It's fumigating. It's quatar, it's man. 
It's hot boxing. That's what it has to do with, man. You bring instances and then it goes into your lungs, right? It goes down your spine, um, down the trachea, into the lungs that are connected to, but your trachea is also connected to your esophagus, which then goes down into, you know, your diaphragm and all this shit, which goes down. Like basically you're consuming. It connects to all the rest of your systems. And then it links into your bloodstream from there. And then your heart pumps it through your bloodstream. So then you're, so like I said, when you smoke quantity, you're hot boxing. That's what the incense is. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like physically, like when we smoke, like that's like a, an, an incense. Like it, that's why we, it's an elevation. That's why we get elevated, man. But to Yahweh now, because that we, we used to burn physical quana, to Yahweh now, it's spiritual quana, man. It's your voice, man. It is holy of holies, homie. All right, and let's get that. Let's get some more just showing that the altar was right before the bell. Let's get Exodus. We're just going to start plowing through precepts. So, you know, excuse me if I start trying to speed up and go really fast. Okay, so we got Exodus 40 and 5. You shall place the gold altar for incense in front of the Ark of the Testimony, in front of it, and in place the curtain of the entrance of the tabernacle. So right right there, man, just right right there, right before it. You know what I'm saying? Just like your throat's right before your fucking head. You know what I'm saying? And it says, okay, also verses 26 and 27, you could read... He placed the gold altar in the tent of meeting in front of the partition, which is the, the, the holiest veil. Upon it, he caused incense spices to go up in smoke as Yahweh had commanded Masha. So then he burned Kwana as an incense as uh, Nama Masha. So now let's go to uh, Masha um, was commanded. Salak. I was saying numbers. I was trying to go to the precept. Numbers 4 and 11. So let's go to numbers 4 and 11. We're just going to hit him down the road, man. Down the line. Boop, 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 boop. Knock him out. Uh, numbers 4 and 11. And then I'll, uh, well, I'll probably finish on this video showing that the incense altar is the... Throw, and then the next video, I'm probably going to do a part two, um, rebuking Judah, showing that he's actually offering burn, uh, false incense like Jeroboam. Man. He's actually playing out the, Jer pro, uh, the um, uh, Jeroboam today spiritually. Okay. Upon the golden altar, they shall spread a cloth of turquoise rule. Oh, oh, okay. Sorry, Salak. That was my own little. Uh, it's all right. You don't have to listen. Um, even, in, even in Solomon's, 1 Kings 6 and 22. Even in Solomon's temple. Like I said, I haven't gotten there yet because we're not there yet. We're, well, you know, people that watch me, we're teaching, we're going step by step. We're making sure we get everything right, man. We ain't skipping around, hopping around, being all crazy, not teaching people anything right. What the fuck is that? First Kings 6 and 22. And he, when he overlaid the temple with gold until the entire temple was completely overlaid, the whole altar that stood opposite the entrance of the inner sanctum, he overlaid with gold. So that's the the inner sanctum. He made two chairs, which is the holy of holies. So it's the opposite. It's like right in front of it, man. Like right in front of the the. the watch, look. Let me. Where's my other slug? I dropped my other drawing. Hold on, give me a second. Let me grab it. Yeah. Okay. So this is like inside Solomon's uh, temple. This is the second temple. See, the stairs are like there's there's the the partition, the veil, the incense altar is like right here. I just didn't draw it on this one, but I'll draw it on my next one. I'm gonna refine these drawings. This is my first batch. Um, that I've been had for like a little while, uh, for a while now, actually. Um, so the, and then the stairway, you know what I'm saying is like in the Holy of Holies, you know what I'm saying? But there's like the veil and then it's right in front of it. So it's, the, it just shows you that it's like always right. It's right in front of it. Okay. So now you guys ready for the precepts to, to prove what I've been saying? All right. Let's go to Jonah first. That's right. Jonah. Jonah, Jonah and the whale. All right. People want to call it. All right. So here you go. Um, Jonah two. Jonah chapter two, verses seven through nine. Look, I descended to the bases of the mountains. The earth, its bars were closed against me forever. Uh oh, your base, the base of the mountains, you closed up like Nebuchadnezzar, man, chained down. Yet you lifted my life from the pit. Just like it says in, uh, Sakari was giving me shit about Psalms uh, 16, uh, I believe it was, where it says that, um, that David said that you won't leave my soul in hell and won't let your Holy One see corruption. Well, right there, look, he says, he did the. Uh, Jonah went through similar shit. He were closed against him, but yet he lifted my life from the pit. Oh, Yahweh, my power. When my soul was faint within me, I remembered Yahweh. My prayer came to you, to your holy temple. 
my prayer came to you, to your holy temple. It raises up. When you pray, it comes to him in his holy temple. That's what it is. When you pray spiritually, you know what's happening. So this is what's happening. When you, when you pray, when you utter your voice and you're praying with Yahweh with your voice, it has power. The Yahweh, his words have power, man. Words have power. And that's why he, he when he spoke, when, he, when you pray to Yahweh, the angels take that basically as incense. It's even in your new damn New Testament, man. It's even in fucking Revelations 8 and 3. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, for all you guys that fucking, it's even in there. Look, freaking ridiculous. And, and yet you guys still can't get it. Look, and another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. So the golden altar, they're offering incense with the prayers. Like it's going up to Yahweh. The inc prayers are incense. And that's what uh, the four presences, the four angels, uh, the archangels, the four main are, because there's seven of them, but then there's four of them above that as, as spoken of in Anak. They go in before Yahweh and offer, they, they take in the prayers and they present the prayers of the so-called saints, you know, who are us, the holy, to Yahweh. You know what I mean? It's an incense offering. You incense, That's why it goes up goes up into his temple it goes up and he smells that's why sweet savor because your fucking throat you could smell what you eat i mean uh yeah i smell what you eat. you know what i'm saying if you if your nose is out you're gonna be smelling what you're eating you ain't gonna know what you eat that's why you plug your nose when you want to eat something gross then you can't tell what it tastes like y'all got no taste man you ain't got no smell that's why yahweh says your offering's stanky anyways let's get more proof they ain't getting enough oh we got we don't even know all right let's go to psalms 50 yeah step it up psalm 50 all right, let's get it. Psalms 50. We'll start at verse 14. And it says, Offer Yahweh. Continue. Uh, it says, uh, Confession. Then redeem your vows to the Most High. So offer. To offer, you have to offer Yahweh. Confession. Then redeem your vows to the Most High. And call upon me in the day of distress, I will release you and you will honor me. So that's what Yahweh is telling us to do, man. And if you will jump down to verse um, 23. Actually, let's just keep on reading. Uh, but to the wicked, Yahweh said, To what purpose do you recount my decrees and bear my covenant upon your lips? So that's all for you wicked who think that you're fucking teaching shit, but you're really not. For you hate discipline and you threw my words behind you. That's you, Judah. You didn't want the dis you didn't want the discipline, man. Me and uh, and brother Dan and brother Tabak and all the brothers tried to warn you, man. Tried to help you and, and and open rebuke, man. Better than hidden love, man. We tried to help you out, and you you fucking despised it, man. Proverbs one seven. You despised wisdom. If you saw a thief, you agreed to be with him. That's Sakari. The the Sakaris, man. They were thieves, and with adulterers was your lot. The, your lot is with the adulterers, man. That's why you're with Sakari. They're adulterers. They commit adultery. You dispatch your mouth for evil and your tongue adheres to deceit. Oh, you sit and speak against your brother. Damn, you slander your mother's son. Oh, damn, that's if that ain't happening now. These have you done and I kept silent. You thought I was like you. I will. You thought I was like you. You thought, damn, man. That's how you thought I was like you, man. You thought you did, bet you Judah thinks he has a heart like Yahweh too, right? He thinks he has so much understanding, man. You thought I was like you. I will rebuke you and lay it clearly before your eyes. Ah, oh, man. Understand this now. You have forgotten the Most High, lest I tear you asunder and there be none to rescue. So you thought you were like David, Solomon, like the Most High. But you're getting rebuked and your shit's getting laid clearly before you. Understand this now, you that have forgotten the Most High. Lest I tear you asunder and there be none to rescue. Wow. He who offers confession honors me. And one who orders his way, I will show him the salvation of Yahweh. And salvation, we know, is uh, Tasha. Uh, which, I don't know, it's... Uh, Shabbat. Oh, anyway, so look, offer confession. So you, twice, you offer your confessions, man. You confess to Yahweh, man. You confess your sins. You confess that shit. You confess the sins of the forefathers. And you confess your sins, and and you offer. You 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 confess. You, you you do what you have to do. Let's get more. Let's get more. We ain't done. Hosea fourteen one and two. Hosea fourteen one and two. What does it say? 
Uh, actually, it's verse three because it's fourteen. It's fourteen, and let's see. I have it written down for the KJV. It's fourteen verses one through two in the KJV, but it's three through four, or or two through three. Uh, in the in the stones, return, Yasha, all unto Yahweh your power, for you have stumbled in your iniquity. See, just turn back, just repent, man. What the fuck? Take words with you and return to Yahweh. See, take words with you. Didn't you? Uh, Brother Gabaria even went over that in one of his videos I had seen. Um, he had touched on how we robbed the Most High because we've always been talking about this. We robbed the Most High in in uh, in uh, Malachi. He said, "You robbed me in tithes and offerings." What offerings? The offerings of of your your uh, uh, confession. So he says, takes words with you and return to Yahweh. Say to him, may you forgive all iniquity and accept good intentions and let our lips substitute for bulls. What was that? I don't think I read that right. Let our lips substitute for bulls, meaning what comes out of your lips. You can't make things come out of your lips unless it comes from your fucking voice box, homie. Haven't you ever seen South Park with with that one dude the with the voice box and you can't you can't speak without having to put in the voice box the fake voice box to his shit because his shit's all fucked up? If you lose your voice, have you ever seen dogs that got their voice boxes clipped and they can't bark anymore? Like that's what it is. Like that's why he's saying you offer it up, you offer your incense offering, and it comes out your lips. Uh, and and it's and and we're and we're supposed to ask Yahweh to accept that for a substitute of bulls. This is why you man Jer- Jeroboam, aka Judas, is burning false incense. He's burning the, to the golden calves, man. He's it's uh, it's it's awful, man. It's awful. But that that ain't even enough. That ain't enough. Hell no, that ain't enough. Let's go back to Psalms sixty one and eight. Uh, may he sit right. May he sit be forever before Yahweh, appoint kindness and truth that they may preserve him. Thus I shall praise your name forever to fulfill my vows day after day. Remember it says to fulfill your vows too, when we're talking about the vows, thus shall I shall praise your name forever. So giving praise is fulfilling your vows, which is confession and offerings, man. That ain't enough. I know that ain't enough. Let's go, 18 and 6. Psalms 18 and 6. We're really getting warmed up. Don't worry. We still got plenty more. Uh, The pains of the grave surround me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I would call upon Yahweh. And to my power, I would cry for salvation. From his abode, he would hear my voice. My cry to him would reach his ears. And your ears, um, your sinuses are connected to your respiratory system. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, all this is connected. The ears, the nose, the mouth, the incense, like everything. That's why he says, you're hot smoke in my mouth. The incense, just everything. That's why he says, the, the put coals on, on Isaiah's mouth. In uh, Isaiah 6, he put the coals, the burning the coals uh, of incense, you know what I'm saying? To keep them uh, burning the fire. You know what I mean? Like, he, it's the mouth, man. It's the throat. He's clarifying his, his, his altar down to the throat, you know what I'm saying? But it comes out through the lips. Um... Okay, so and that's okay, so that's part one of that a uh, little bit. Okay, so now we get to the good ones. Uh, Psalm 66. Psalm 66. Gotta try to get through this. Uh, okay, Psalm 66, and let's get verses 1, 4, 8, and 10 through 15. Okay, so look. For the conductor, a song, a psalm. So these are songs, right? Shout joyfully to Yahweh all the earth. So he's saying to shout. Sing the glory of his name. That's a commandment. Sing the glory of his name, man. Make glorious his praise. How do you do that with your voice? Say unto Yahweh, how awesome are your works. Because of your abundant power, your enemies will be, will, uh, ow, slot. I got a uh, like, bit. Your enemies will lie, will lie to you. All the earth will bow to you and they will sing to you. They will sing to your name. Salah. So there's the singing, man. It's about singing, using your voice to exalt Yahweh. Let's jump down. Verse 8. Bless our power, O peoples, and make heard the sound of his praise. See, make heard. You got to use the voice, man. 
even when you pray, you got to use your voice, man. Heard the sound of his praise. He who set our soul in life and did not allow our foot to falter. Why? Because he gave us a, li- a lamp. Look, for your, for you examined us, O oh, Most High. You refined us as a refining silver, which is part of the, yeah, you got to go from the, the, the copper to the silver to the gold. So refining silver, turning into gold. You brought us into the prison. You placed constraint and you brought us in out into abundance. So, right, we entered, oh, so it's like, I we placed constraint upon our loins. Slug, I, I skipped the verse. You brought us into the prison. You placed constraint. So we were in the prison houses, right? You placed constraint upon our loins and you mounted a mortal over our head and we entered fire and water and you brought us out into abundance. So we went to the prison houses and then in the prison houses, we got covered with Jesus. We got a mortal put over our head and then we entered into the fire, right? The, which is the altar of the burnt offerings, the, the copper altar and then the water, which is the bronze lava, and you brought us out into abundance. And then you get abundance because you get the, the rains, because you sacrificed your lower self and went through the baptism. I will enter your house with burnt offerings. I will fulfill to you my vows. So see the burnt offerings and the vows. You will perform the vows by doing the burnt offerings. That's like when you vow something to Yahweh, you speak the vow. It's a burnt offering, the, the, the elevation offerings. I will enter your house with burnt offerings. I will fulfill to you my vows that my lips uttered and my mouth spoke in my distress. So see the vows that my lips uttered, because it's a comma, my vows that my lips uttered and my mouth spoke in my distress. Come on, man. The lips, the vows, the offerings. Dude, it's your fucking voice, man. It's your voice. Let's get Psalm 116. Let's get Psalm 116. Uh, verse one, love, I, I love him for Yahweh hears my voice, my supplications. See, he hears our voice, our supplications. As he has inclined his ear to me, so in my days shall I call. So see right there, we're supposed to call on him, man. Let's go. What Verse four, then oh, it's just, uh, the pains of death encircled me. The confines of the grave have, have found me. Distress and grief I would find. Yeah, it sounds familiar right now. Then I... I would invoke the name of Yahweh. Please, Yahweh, save my soul. Gracious is Yahweh and righteous is the Most High. Uh, uh, our, our, our power is merciful. So see, you cry out, man. You cry out to him and you, and you, and you ask him. Let's go down to 12, uh, 12 verses 19, uh, verse 12. And it says... How can I repay Yahweh for all his bounty to me? That's why you, you got to give them tithes, man. But we can't give them tithes. We robbed him. I will raise the cup. So this is how he does it. I will raise the cup of salvations and the name of Yahweh I will invoke. The cup of salvation and the name of Yahweh I will invoke. My vows to Yahweh I will pay in the presence now of his entire people. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm paying my vows, speaking the words to Yahweh, burning incense in the prison now of the entire people. Right? You know what I'm saying? Offering the incense, man. It's your fucking voice, your vows, man. You invoke Yahweh. You, you, you call out to him. You know what I'm saying? You ask him. That's your incense. You know what I'm saying? The prayers. Yo. Because that's what's happening now. That's what I'm saying. Like invoke because I'm praying in my mind. You know what I'm saying? And that's what's happening now. Like these prayers that I'm doing because I prayed that this would come out, man. This is what's coming out. It's manifesting, man. In the presence now of his entire people. It's it's coming out, man. Difficult in the eyes. And this ain't for glory of man. This ain't for glory of This is glory for Yahweh. You know what I'm saying? You don't know no more prayers. I didn't pray Yahweh in public, man. You don't know. You don't know how I pray Yahweh. But I'll just tell you right now. He's answering them prayers. Difficult. Right? In the eyes of Yahweh is the death of his devout ones. Please, Yahweh, for I am your servant. I am your servant, son of your handmaid. You have released my bonds. To you, I will sacrifice a thanksgiving offering. And the name of Yahweh I will invoke. So see, to you, I will sacrifice a thanksgiving offering. And the name of Yahweh I will invoke. What's that thanksgiving offering? My vows to Yahweh I will pay in the presence now of his entire people in the courtyards of the house of Yahweh in your midst, O Yahweh Halal Yah. 
So right there, man, and motherfuckers try to get on me because I fucking say yeah or whatever. But man, that's like a part. Like I said, if it's there and you use it and you know Yahweh, okay. But like I said, there's too many pretenders that, like uh, nowadays, you gotta use Yahweh in the congregation, man. Can't be just sticking to Yah, yo. They, there's gotta be a difference. We have to put a difference. So this is what I'm doing, paying, man, paying my tithes, yo, paying my tithes. Because I prayed to you how, man, I'm paying my tithes and now now the, the, the truth is coming out, you know? That's why you got to pay your tithes to Yahweh, man. You got to offer them offerings. You got to praise his name in front of the congregation, which is like showing and extolling and, and showing his name. And then you also got to pray towards him, which is you and your own time and doing your stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, let's see. Let's see, Psalm 22 now. Go back to Psalm 22. Psalm 22, 22 through 26. Hopefully we have enough time. If it cuts off, I'm sorry. Look, save me from the lion's mouth as you have answered me from the horns of the Ramyam. I will proclaim your name to my brethren in the midst of your congregation. I will praise you. So see, you will praise. See, you give praise in the midst of the congregation you proclaim the name and you give praise to him and then you pray to him in secret right i will proclaim your name to my brethren in the midst of the congregation i will praise you you who fear yahweh praise him all you seed of yaquab glorify him be in awe of him and you seed of Yashar'al, for he has neither despised nor loathed the supplication of the poor, nor has he concealed his face from him. But when he cried to him, he heard, From you is my praise in the great congregation. I will fulfill my vows before those who fear him. Right? The humble will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek Yahweh will praise him. Your hearts will live forever. Right? And let's make sure. Ow. Oh, get off me, man. Uh, let's see. Where is it at? Yep. La Baba come. Right there. It's your mind. La Baba come. In your heart, your mind will live forever. All right. So, uh, let's see. Uh, Psalm 69. It's all about giving them praises, man. Psalm 69. 69. And 30 through 36. Man, I hope I have enough time. I'm almost done though. And then we can do part two after. It says, But I am afflicted in pain and in pain. Your salvation, O Most High, shall raise me high. See, elevation. I shall praise the name of Yahweh with song. I shall magnify it with thanksgiving. So see, and giving thanks also. And it shall please Yahweh more than a full grown bull, possessed of horns and hooves. So, see, it's better than a full-grown bull. Man, he will magnify the thanksgiving. The humble has have seen it and will be glad. You who seek the Most High and your hearts will revive. So, see, hopefully, y'all will be glad when you see this and your minds will revive then. For Yahweh hearkens to the destitute and he has not despised his prisoners. Heaven, remember the prison? Heaven and earth shall praise him, the seas and all that moves within them. For Yahweh shall save Zion and or Zion and build the cities of Yahweh, and they shall settle there and possess it. The offspring of his servants shall inherit it, and those who love his name shall dwell in it. So right there, he says, the offering of thanksgiving with your voice, praising his name, shall magnify him with thanksgiving. Magnify it, the name. Praise the name, name, name. That is the incense offering. It's, it's the name, man. It's the name. Psalms 107 and 22. It's the last, well, we got one little precept with that too, but this is, uh, well, actually, this is the last one. 107 and 22. That's because we can't do the real Thanksgiving offering, which I'll show you what those are. It says, He would dispatch his words and cure them and let them escape their destruction. See, then, see, look. Fools, because their sinful path and because of their iniquities, were afflicted. Their soul abhorred all food, and they reached until the portals of the death. So that's where Judah is. He's at the portal of death with them idolaters. Then they cried out to Yahweh in their distress, and he would save them from their straits. He would dispatch his word and cure them, and he would let them escape their destruction. Let them give thanks to Yahweh for his kindness." 
and his wonders to the children of men. And let them slaughter thanksgiving offerings and relate his works with joyful songs. So see, that's slaughtering the thanksgiving offering, is relating his works with joyful song and praising his name among the congregation and talking about his words and giving thanksgiving to him and all that stuff, man. And then you could go further by giving your prayers, your supplications, man. You know what I'm saying? That's how you please Yahweh. And if you want to read about the real thanksgiving uh, uh, sacrifices... It's uh, Leviticus 7, 11 through 21. But like I said, we can't do those now, so this is a substitute for that. Psalms 141, 1 through 2 is the last one. Uh, Psalm 141, 1 through 2. A psalm, a song of Dawad, O Yahweh, I have called you. Hasten to me. Give ear to my voice when I call to you. Let my prayer stand as incense before you. Let my prayer stand as incense before you. The lifting of my hands as an afternoon offering. Post a sentry for my mouth, O Yahweh, guard the door of my lips. Let my, not my mind incline toward an evil thing, to perform evil acts with men who are doers of iniquity, and let me not break bread in their pleasure feasts. Man, Judah did not do that. He did the exact opposite. Let the righteous one strike me with kindness, and let him rebuke me like the finest oil. Let my head not refuse it, for my prayer is eternally against their evils. And he he rejected it, man. He's, and that's my prayers are eternally against their evil, man. This this is what happened, man. He he fucked up, bro. I'm telling you that that's we're supposed to cry to him. That's a prayer, the incense before him. That was it. That that killed it right there. I saved the best for last. That killed it. So, anyways, look at all these. I have all these to show that he's burning false incense. Remember the incense upon bricks? Go read Isaiah 65, 3-7. In fact, we might try to get that real quick. Just to show you what he's doing real quick. But I'm a, I have a whole lesson on it. Um, burning that false incense, man. 65, 3-7. Um, it says, The people who continually anger me to my face, who sacrifice in their gardens and burn incense on the bricks... Who sit in graves and sleep with corpses and who eat the flesh of swine and have sauce of forbidden foods. Man, you fucking dealing on that meat of Esau, son. And you're sacrificing incense on bricks. Did not he put that thing, the brick? He's equating bricks with the stone, right? Brick stone, stone brick, right? That's the brick. That's what he's off because he's tried to say that the incense altar was like a brick. It was like a stone, a piece of stone. He's trying to offer incense on a fucking brick, on a piece of stone. When it's supposed to be offered on wood overlaid with gold. Man, he just doesn't know anything. And this is and this is such a simple brick, man. I, like I said, I got plenty more, man. And not only that, but I still got the menorah to go over, man. Like, I, bro, it's ugh, precept upon precept. And that motherfucker had the in, uh, balls to tell me I wasn't good at precepts. Oh, nonsense. Look at all these right here. All these right here is that it is against you, man. Showing that he's fucking up la large, man. The Jeremiah eighteen fifteen incense burned to vanity. You know Ezekiel nine eleven incense uh, in darkness. That he's doing that in darkness. He's doing the thing in darkness. Ezekiel sixteen eighteen he's committing whoredoms. Uh, Hosea two and thirteen incense to Baalim. Four of uh, chapter four verses one through three incense under the shadows. He's doing incense under the shadows of Yahweh, man, or, or Yahweh Shai. It's a slock. Uh, uh, the, the idol. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Hosea 11 and 2, they give incense to graven images. Micah 1 and 11, they burn incense everywhere. Like, this is what the, this is what's going on. But I'm going to hit it up. We're going to hit it up. I, I'm out of time now. So, um, but hopefully that was edifying. Hopefully, you know, I don't know. I was just so, like, angry with, with this wickedness that's going on. So, Salak, if I misspoke, um, if I did, I will correct myself. I have no problem with that. Um, don't take anything out of content. You guys know what's up, man. You know, Moses had the speech impediment problem too. Sometimes, you know, you don't get to totally, like, I guess, explain things the way you wanted to explain it or whatever. But, you know, Salak, Yahweh knows the mind, right? So, he knows my intentions. He knows what's up. Um, so hopefully it was edifying for you guys. Hopefully you get it. Um, like I said, part two's coming up. Um, we could probably go over just a few key scriptures real quick again, and then, um, and then hit up more of the incense altar. We'll probably break some of the shit down in Hebrew. We already have a lot of it broken down Hebrew. We already went over the gold. We went over the shinum wood. 
so we know that it's just sin overlaid with gold. Uh, the cute, the rectangle though, I got to break down the cubits uh, and show you what that means, the shape of it. And then the horns, um, you know what I'm saying? Just, you know, a few, few things. And then I wanted to break down the menorah too, because the manawara is actually the, uh, is the actual shield. And, uh, and in just in case if I cut out, because I'm explaining, it's Ka'ala, Yahawad, Zaba, Um, uh, the, see, I got, you guys don't even know, look. This is, breakdown of the Ark. We got the table, Shobra, see, and I had the Solomon's Temple separated from the, from the tabernacle. And I got the shit already ready to rock, man. I'm just doing it the way you're supposed to fucking do it. You're supposed to take your damn time. Um, Manawara, see? Um, oh, it's a chandelier to show you the fact that it's actually uh, in the sh shape of the shield and not just like a regular candle. It's like because chandeliers are like open, you know. Um, oh, just to show you that Judah is uh, what's going on is he's actually because it represents a musical chord. He's untuned. He's untuned. Um, he's not a fixed weight. He's unweighted. He's he's mismeasured. He's, he doesn't know time. He's, he's out of time. He's out of instance. He's divisive. Uh, or he doesn't know how to... Div he's, he's divisive as in the bad way, but he doesn't know how to get divisions properly as in uh, rations of food. Lot, part, portion. He's in his wrong portion. Such things belong to... Like, he, you know, this is why he doesn't understand shit. Because he doesn't understand the menorah or the manawara, and he doesn't understand the incense offering, the incense altar, which means that none of his prayers, it's an abomination. He's not hearing any of his prayers. None of his prayers are being heard. I hope everyone realizes that. Take a second to realize that. Uh, uh, Proverbs chapter 1. His, in, his prayers are not being heard. He is laughing that he... he, he look. Because he says, return to my reproof. This is chapter 1 verse 23. And behold, I will express my spirit to you. I will make my words known to you. But he's not doing that. But because I have called you and you refused, because I stretched forth my hand and no one listened, and you rejected my every counsel and despised my every reproof, I too will laugh at your misfortune and mock when your dread arrives, when your fear arrives as sudden darkness and misfortune comes like a storm. Then when affliction and oppression come upon you, then I, you will call me, but I will not answer. Then you will search for me, but you will not find me because they hated knowledge and did not choose to fear Yahweh because Verse 7 says, the fear of Yahweh is the beginning of knowledge. And you could get a precept for this in Proverbs 28 and 9. But anyway, so like with that, hopefully that was enough. Uh, I got more to come, so I just wait on that. Uh, with that, call Allah, Yahweh, Zabba, Awad, Akkad. Shema, Yashar, Al, Yahweh, Allah, Hayana, Yahweh, Akkad. Barak Hashem, Yahweh, Ahab, Yahweh. Barak Atham, Wabayat. Amen. Shalom.